Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl, Brandy Shanae. Um, today is not my typical video or anything, anything bookish related, or it's mostly about the booktube community, of course. And of course, um, things that I need to say without trying to be so emotional. Um, as you already have seen, possibly, um, I had did a previous video, maybe a week or maybe night, a couple days ago, about some of my friends experiencing police brutality during protesting and also prior to the protesting. Um, and then acknowledging the fact of what happened with George Floyd and also with Breonna Taylor um, and so many more black lives that have been lost based off of police brutality. And now I'm, I'm wanting to speak not only about what's happening in the US, but also what's happening in the big booktube community. So I started booktube in 2018 in June, um, pretty much trying to get away from reality. Um, but then I realized I can never escape my reality ever, ever in my life due to the fact of the color of my skin. I know that sound, I didn't, and when, when I say that, does not does that sound terrible? Like, don't you get that? Like. I always like I know like I've seen people stating they have anxiety they don't want to talk about the issues that's ha really happening with the protesting going on but at the same time I have an ex I have anxiety my entire life my very entire life and I'm not trying to break down in tears I'm not trying to do that today but I'm trying to give y'all the real I'm all every time a cop car comes right in the back of my car even though i haven't i'm going the regular speed limit and everything like that i still have anxiety because i feel like they're gonna pull me over for whatever reason they may pull me over because they're trying to reach their quota or because i'm just black and then on top of that i have anxiety because not only am i driving but i also have my children with me as well and my husband is working so i'm usually with my kids whenever we go for, you know, just a ride or whatever, just for them to get out of the house. And for me, it's just, I am living, I have been living in fear. Why should I have to be living in fear? Why is it that way? Well, let me tell you why. It's pretty much systematic oppression. Like back during the Middle Passage of, you know, of our ancestors, our African ancestors being transported, either dumped literally into the Atlantic Ocean because they felt like they didn't want to um, have all of their livestock or whatever they want, they pretty much called, uh, called, you know, them on the ships to be infected or with disease. So literally they had them all chained up together and thrown in the Atlantic Ocean and drowned them. Then after when they've done all that, they still are transporting their cargo or whatever they they would say about them or their, you know, Negroes or whatever, or their monkeys, which I have been called a monkey before and a nigger. And they would transport them to the Caribbean, South America or the States. And then we have the history in the Caribbean where you have different countries, European countries coming over um, and doing terrible things to the, to the slaves, cutting off limbs, everything like that. That also happened in Africa um, where King Leopold came into the picture. And that's when we had all this controversy and that's why there's a lot of wars in Africa due to Europeans coming to Africa and disrupting pretty much the culture and everything itself and separating the people and having them go against each other. Systematic oppression. Then you have the states where if you haven't heard of Rosewood, I suggest you look it up and educate yourself. And that's another thing, like if you don't understand what I'm saying or understand about oppression or what we're going through today with this protesting, do your research. Like everyone has been saying, Google is free. Educating yourself is the most, like that's the most powerful thing you can ever do. Even as us African-Americans, black people, we, always find ourselves to self-educate ourselves because we have to we need to we have to work 10 times harder than anyone else like when i went to college pretty much predominantly a white school 
in Columbus, Ohio, which technically is Bexley, Ohio. Only black girl in my class. People tell me I don't belong here. I'm a monkey ass nigga. They've called me that. I, I, it goes on. And so if you think of, so back to Rosewood, I'm rambling. We started as a black people to create our businesses. And Rosewood, every, no one um, in that community, the black people had their own church. They had their own schools. They had their own stores. They had their, they owned their houses. They owned their own land. And then out of nowhere, a woman who was beaten by a white man and who was also married, and that man that, was, that had beaten her was not her husband, she had lied and stated that a, a, a huge black man beat her. And she had told the, the white community or whatever. And so then after all that, they're trying to find this black white man that, or excuse me, this big uh, black man and trying to hunt him down. So literally they slaughtered tons of black men because all the men stated they have not done that. And the white men did not believe them. So they started lynching them. And then it just got out of hand where they started burning their, their land and their houses that they owned, their churches that they owned. And they started raping and murdering black women and children. And there was some people that were fortunate enough to get away. And then I know some people feel like what's looting, the looting and the stores being on fire. I get that, that yes, there's some things I agree with, some things I don't agree with, but then you have a history of us as black people and we had owned something and it was taken away from us and burned down to a crisp. And so today, like in the booktube community where no one's talking, like where do we go from here? How do we make a difference? What is the solution? How can we, how can some, how can we help you? Or better yet, how can you get what we're trying to communicate to you? Now, um, Bookish Realm, she had just did a video um, and I watched it and I was in tears. And it made me realize like, I need to keep speaking. Like, yes, I did a previous video about my experiences before, but I'm gonna keep talking about it. I'm gonna keep telling you, telling you I'm not gonna be silent anymore I mean when I started booktube in 2018 I had no clue but the thing is I was like okay this is a community that's just just loves books but then I started noticing things in the diversity that's really not diverse um and like with the hate you give movie I I was so looking forward to that movie and I read the book I loved it so much I met Angie Thomas in person we had a conversation like I loved it and then when I found out there was extras that were chosen for the movie and the people that were chosen, I'm not gonna lie, I was silent, but I was hurt. I was upset. I was disappointed because majority of them, there was the only one black person selected, especially out of the, you know, out of the booktube community when there's so many more black book tutors out there, like so many. And it bothered me and I did not say a thing and it bothers me that I didn't say anything then but then again it was during the time when I first started booktube I didn't know what I was getting myself into I didn't know everything and I didn't speak up and it and, and it bothered me because I feel like none of the people that were chosen except the one of the, the one black booktuber they chose knows anything about police brutality not one damn thing they may have heard of it but they don't know they have never experienced it, never had to deal with anything regarding a person of color going through shit every single day. Like literally, I can't even walk down the street in a nice neighborhood without somebody thinking I'm about to steal from their house or something. That has happened before. That has happened to me. And it bothered me, but I'm just letting you know that. And then when booktubers were selected to to pretty much see Michelle Obama about her book Becoming. <laughs> that definitely bothered me and I didn't say anything and I take full responsibility for not saying something because it really did bother me. I did not say something because I, I was all in my, my feelings and I just felt like wow. Wow. That's all I could think of is wow. And now I'm here today, I'm speaking out my piece and saying that 
enough is enough. I'm tired of everything. I'm tired of being silent. Um, and I've seen this pattern on booktube since 2018 where if something happens or something and people just keep subscribing to black booktubers because they feel bad. It's not, it's, we're not asking for subscriptions. We're not asking for any of that. We're asking you to acknowledge the fact of what's happening. Take take accountability or say something. There's a lot of you that have a huge following. And, and so we want you to use your voice. Unless you really feel that way about black people or like, like, do you really feel that way that we're just inferior human beings? Like, I literally this past couple of weeks, I have, I have lost friends. I stopped speaking to people due to due to what they've been saying on social media and everything about what's happening and it shocked the hell out of me and I'm like what the fuck like and I'm like man it seems like when things get bad you see people's true colors and it's just it bothers me in the booktube community I just I'm not forcing anyone to say something but I'm just saying people notice when you're being silent and you're not acknowledging anything or trying to make a difference you know, it's not like I said, it's not about subscriptions or you subscribing to a black booktuber because just because I mean, if you like their content, sure, go ahead. But it's way more than that. It's beyond that. We want you to speak up and use your voice because you you have the power to do so, because as a black person. What power do we have? And now we're speaking out. And we're going to continue speaking out because we want to make a change and we want it to make a difference and we want to keep going on with this because something that has to give we're trying to make a solution to this we're tired of the oppression that's happening because it's just it's terrible and i feel like for everything for things that change the system has to change everything has to change booktube this the booktube community has to change opportunities for black booktubers should be the same as anything else there shouldn't be a disadvantage of any any sort just because I'm black I sh like I, I should be able to have the same opportunities right what it, it's always about like I, mm, I, I just want to see some changes I like I've seen Twitter and everything and I try to stay off it as much but I but I I read about it because it's an ongoing issue about JK Rowling and what she tweeted that was some ignorance that she had stated and like when I had tweeted saying I will no longer be talking about Harry Potter content or the books anymore due to that ignorant statement and one-sided and and just closed-minded person that's just terrible like wow and so in my other video, I stated that my TBR is pretty much going to be books by black authors, which I, and even prior to that, I still, I have a lot of books that are written by black authors because I support them. And so, and so for me personally, like literally Friday, I just got laid off um, due to COVID-19, but I still feel there was other things going on, but we're not going to get into that. And literally it took me being laid off for me and my husband to finally be like, you know what? That was that was a sign that we need to start our own business. So literally Wednesday, things are going to be start rolling out. We're going to be starting our own business. And literally, I, me and him decided that I'm no longer going to be working under anyone else. No one else. No other company. Like, that's last straw. This is the time for us to have our own businesses and, to, and also to support black businesses, which I have been doing. <laughs> like... I even buy my hair from um, a black um, hair store. Like I'm trying to support as many black black companies and everything as much as I can because I feel like there is a time where we do need to have our own stores to show our power that we we have we are a power we have a voice we have power. It's just we are being oppressed of not using our voices and our power because anytime we get a chance to do so. We're either beaten or killed by the police by the police or incarcerated, which many black brothers and sisters are incarcerated or in prison. Majority of our community, the black community, is incarcerated. But anyways, I I just wanna say what I have to say. Like 
I love like when I started this book this community like started in the booktube community I love the fact that I was able to be part of something because people love reading books but then I feel like I put myself back in another situation where there's no diversity um, people are being silent about issues but when but when an issue comes up or when a black man is brutally killed in cold blood by a police officer that's when everybody wants to talk and everybody wants to subscribe to black booktubers and and whatnot and I'm like why is it why does it have to be when somebody is murdered that people want to say something about diversity you know like why or acknowledge that there are black booktubers or even the fact of like with the Michelle Obama thing going on with the booktubers they selected how come any of them didn't realize like mm, something doesn't seem right but then again when you have that opportunity of either thinking of yourself you're going to think of yourself before you think of others and not be you know and just be silent and all I'm saying is booktube this booktube community where do we go from here we've said we have so many people speaking of the same issues and so many but now it's to the point where we've said our piece we've told you what to do we pretty much gave you the tools literally go google google it or better yet you read this is a book to community. Read some books about oppression. Literally. Or anything. Read. Read a read, please. Read a W. E. B. Du Bois book. Langston Hughes. Read. Read. You love reading, you know. It's, it's a book to community. It's a book channel of like a community filled with people loving books. Read. I don't think it's that difficult um, for you to get. How many how many times do we have to keep having these same conversations over and over again? Like we're tired of having to acknowledge it where we've trained every simple thing that we can possibly give you for you to get what we're going through and what we're trying to communicate to you, how we're feeling, how it, how it is of be, being black in America, being black in general like it's terrible and like I'm fearful of my husband too because he's been pulled over before because he said he, because the police officer said he fit a description of somebody that has happened many times with my husband by the way many times many fucking times and now he's at the point where he feels like he needs to react and we literally got in an argument um, it was a small argument about, you know, like if you like, he literally just said if he gets pulled over and a police per assaults him, he's going to offend for himself, defend himself. And I was scared that he said that because I'm like, I, you probably won't get home. And he said, I'm going to make it home. And, and it's like, it shouldn't even get to that situation. And we just had a whole full blown argument of it. We shouldn't even have to argue about that. I shouldn't have to worry about my husband husband being pulled over constantly or being terrorized by a police officer. Like literally he was terrorized by a police officer when he was just pumping gas in his car. Literally when a cop came up and say, hey boy, where are you heading? And my husband was saying to himself, I'm not no damn boy, I'm a fucking man. So it's just like, it's very degrading. So many things people have said to my face and called me names and but anyways booktube once again the question is where do we go from here we've all spoken we said our piece we said what we had to do we're still going to keep talking because it's not over it is not over the protesting is definitely not over it's going to continue on until there is a solution until we pretty much have to rebuild america because america was built on bullshit and oppression and slavery and was built on the backs of black folks. So where do we go from here? Where do we reconstruct the system that was built to oppress black people? Where do we go from here? Just tell me where.